In this video, you're going to learn what GetOps is and why it's taking the development world by storm. So if you're a developer, you're probably already familiar with Get. GetOps is infrastructure as code automation where Get is your single source of truth. Infrastructure as code is a way of defining your infrastructure in a file rather than manually clicking through a GUI. Tools like Terraform, Ansible, and orchestrators like Kubernetes all take on this concept where you define components and resources of your infrastructure in YAML files. Traditionally, in a non-GetOps workflow, when these tools were used, an engineer would typically write the infrastructure files and commit them to a Git repository. Once the code was committed, the engineer would then manually apply the changes to the infrastructure, resulting in the changes. In a GetOps approach, this last step is automated by what's known as a GetOps operator. With a GetOps operator like Argo CD or Flux, once code is committed to a repository, the infrastructure is automatically synced to match what's in Git. This process is known as reconciliation. The operators constantly check the current state of the environment and matches it to the desired state, which is defined in Git. Although this small change of having your environments automatically sync to what's defined in Git may not sound like much, it is an absolute game changer, and organizations are scrambling to implement it. To understand this better, let's consider the traditional approach again where the engineer is manually applying the changes. What if the engineer created the infrastructure files and committed them to Git, but before he ran the apply, he went out for a coffee, started scrolling Reddit, or left for the day? Or even worse, what if he prepared the changes and ran the apply but never committed and pushed the new changes? What's running in production is no longer in sync with what's in Git, and this leads to troubleshooting nightmares. This is a real-world scenario that has happened at even the best companies, and it's what GitOps aims to solve. Now that you have an understanding of what GitOps is, let's go over the four major benefits that GitOps provides you. The first one is environment transparency. Since GetOps operators are constantly looking at your repository and automatically applying the changes as they come in, Git becomes your source of truth. It's no longer guesswork on what configuration the production servers are actually running. The next major benefit is less errors and easy and fast recovery when problems do occur. Since changes are being applied automatically, there's less human error on those applies. Secondly, if an error does get through your GetOps pipeline, since everything is in Git, you can easily do a Git revert to go back to a previous version of the configuration. This is known as a GitOps rollback and it's extremely powerful. You can be confident that even if your changes don't work, it's easy enough to get back to a previous state. The third reason has to do with security. Remember the example with the engineer applying the changes manually? With GetOps, you don't need to give individual engineers permissions to issue changes directly to the infrastructure. Instead, you only give them access to changing what's in Git. You then give your CI solution or your Git operator the permissions required to make the changes in production. Having a GitOps operator make the changes to your environments is much more secure than giving that access to a human. Finally, the last major benefit of a GitOps workflow is speed and agility. Since the apply process is automated, you can deploy faster and more often. Now that you have a good understanding about GetOps, let's talk about deployment strategies, which is important to completely understand the GetOps solutions in the market right now. So GetOps has two different ways of implementing deployments, the push-based model and the pull-based model. The first method where the engineer manually applied the change is known as the push-based model. To make it GetOps, we would simply need to automate the last step of applying the new code. And this can be done with any type of CI-CD service like Jenkins, GitHub Actions, or GitLab. Once the code is checked into Git and the CI tests have passed, the new infrastructure is pushed. The second method, where there was an operator or agent installed in the environment, is known as the pull model. The agent constantly checks the current state of the environment, and if it ever doesn't match the desired state, it pulls the required changes. Now both the push and the pull based models are effective, but they do have their own pros and cons that you should understand. The benefits of the push model is its ease to set up and understand, as well as its flexibility to deploy to anything your pipelines can integrate with. However, there are some security concerns, as firewall ports need to be opened and CI servers need to be given permissions to production environments in order to make the changes. The benefits to the pull based model is that it's fast, efficient, and more secure. There is no need to open your firewall or grant admin access externally. 
The downside to the pull base model is it's basically only available to Kubernetes for the moment. So there you have it, GetOps, the future of DevOps. So now that you're an expert on the theory behind GetOps, it's time to get practical experience with the tools. So make sure to check out my tutorial videos on Argo CD and Flux. I'll be adding links to those videos when they are available. Otherwise, if you're interested in other software development topics, check out the other videos on my channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.